Hello there everybody, Sam Strains here, welcome back to the railway and welcome to another review. Today I'm going to be looking at a model of one of my real life favourite pieces of rolling stock. <laughs> Auto coaches. I absolutely love these things. I think they're fascinating. And if you've never heard of an auto coach before, then stay tuned because they just might blow your mind as they did mine. However, the only model, until today at least, that I've ever owned of an auto coach is this one by Hornby. And it dates back many, many years. In fact, I think it was a Dapol model originally, possibly even Airfix, not sure, but it was developed a long time ago to go alongside the Hornby 14XX locomotive which in itself is very ancient. Still a cool model, of course, but for me, these never quite captured the awesomeness of the auto coach in real life. So today, we're going to be looking at a more up-to-date model of an auto coach, and that is, of course, this one from Backman. And I think you can immediately see, just looking through the front of the box, that this is a more sophisticated model. And it's also in a nicer livery, I think, as well. Yeah, the blood and custard, absolutely love that livery. Okay, prepare yourself for a shock then, because there's some bad news when it comes to the Backman Auto Coach, and it's the same bad news that we find in most cases looking at Backman models. It is, of course, the price. So the RRP on Backman's website for the Auto Coach, I'm laughing, but it's far from funny, is £79.95, with a fairly typical retailer price being £67.99, so the best part of £70. For a coach, for a coach, is this going to be the greatest coach I've ever seen? Well, I'm certainly expecting so. This is really going to have to pull out some stops, isn't it? So that's the bad news. The good news is that you actually don't need a lot of these to create a realistic train. In fact, as a minimum, all you need is one. <laughs> so when you think sort of 80 quid tops for an entire train effectively, that's not too bad, is it? It's still no excuse at all, of course, for prices like that. It's shameful, but it's a small silver lining, I suppose, isn't it? So anyway, very high expectations for this auto coach. We're going to take a look at it today, see if it's any good, see what kind of wow features this model has got, and we'll decide together whether or not this is worth the money. Oh, by the way, I forgot to tell you what I paid. Did I pay 80 quid? No, I bought this for £39.95 in the sale. A miracle. They can suddenly reduce them to basically half price. Amazing. Anyway, let's take a look. So I understand that this model has been around for quite some time, but it's really flown under the radar. And according to Backman's website, there are several different liveries available for this model too, so they should have you covered if this is something you fancy. Anyway, let me show you the end of the box so that you can see exactly the one I've got. So it's 39-578. It is a BR Auto Trailer in the Crimson and Cream. And uh, yeah, I guess that didn't really tell us anything we didn't already know. So hopefully the greatest coach I've ever looked at. Let's open this up and see whether that is the case. All right, incredibly high expectations for this. Now let's pull it out. Ready? Okay. So, interesting, we've got some documentation of some description, so... Alright, so this looks like it's some information about fitting buffer beam details, apparently you have to remove the coupler in order to do that, so... There must be an accessories bag, oh yeah, there is, there is, I'll look at that. And then there's a bit about body shell removal as well, so yeah, it looks like the body clips on, probably won't need to do that today, but uh, it's good that you can, if that's something you decide to do. Right, let's have a look at these accessories then, see what we get included. So I guess this is quite a nice feature, yeah, if we've got some extras to fit as an option. So what have we got here? So yeah, functioning screw link couplings. I think every bit of rolling stock should come with those as an option, so that's great. Nice painted lamp there, and as promised, some buffer beam details such as pipework and the like. So yeah, that's absolutely fine. Nice optional extra, not fitted at the factory so that you have a fully functioning coach with couplings at both ends straight out of the box and I think that's the way it should be. Okay, are we, are we ready to be impressed? I certainly am. Let's have a look. It's got to be better than the old Hornby one, hasn't it? <laughs> Mind you, I bought two of those plus the locomotive for about the price of one of these at RRP. So yeah, no pressure, no pressure, Backman. Okay, let's lift this up. 
So yeah, I mean, without even looking at the detail yet, you can tell that there is a degree of finesse in this model that was completely missing from the old Hornby one. Yeah, everything about this just looks a bit finer, doesn't it, to be honest? The quality of the glazing, the paintwork, we've got the separate handrails and such. Yeah, it definitely looks like a big improvement. And uh, underneath, yeah, we can see there's quite a bit of detail down there, as well as what looks like some sort of uh, power pickup system. So does this model have lights? I mean, that would be fantastic. In fact, I'm almost certainly expecting this to have lights as a partial justification for that insane price. I guess we'll find out later. Anyway, if you're not familiar with auto coaches, and I know most of you probably are, so apologies. But anyway, here comes a little bit of brief history on what these were about, and then we'll take a much closer look at this model. The auto coach was introduced as early as 1904 as a solution for driving push-pull trains from either end of a consist without requiring the locomotive to switch ends. To achieve this, the auto coaches had a driving cab at one end, which was linked to the controls of a steam locomotive at the other end via rotating shafts. And a huge number of these coaches were built, considering how specialist they are. 256 were constructed in total. After many years of use, the auto coach sadly died with the steam locomotive, although a healthy 15 units or so do remain under preservation. So there it is, up close and personal for you, the Backman Auto Trailer, or Auto Coach, whatever you want to call it. And as far as I'm concerned, this model has everything that a piece of rolling stock should. It doesn't have many frills or anything, but I think that's absolutely fine, because of course, when you've got a rake of 10 coaches going by on the layout, you're not really going to be able to take in that nth degree of detail. And of course, having all of those frills and extras just makes models cost a fortune. But that's just the thing with this model because it really doesn't have very many frills and yet it still costs a fortune, which is the biggest problem I've got with this model. It's just quite disappointing and it doesn't do Backman any favours either, does it? Because they set these massively high expectations. I was expecting the greatest coach I'd ever seen in my life and instead what we've got here is just a standard coach with a standard range of features. And we're at the stage where I paid half price for this. It was basically 50% off the RRP, and yet that still does not seem like a bargain to me. That seems to be more or less the right price, if anything, slightly expensive for what you get. So absolutely ludicrous. I think this is a complete rip-off. However, like I say, as a coach, it's absolutely fine. For 40 quid, it's more or less fair enough. Let's take a look at some of the details then. So the decoration, I don't have a problem with. The finish isn't fantastic or anything. It doesn't have a marvelous satin sheen, but it's good enough, I think, for a coach. There is no paint bleed or anything between the different colored sections. It's all being done very precisely and accurately, and the lining looks good as well. Although actually looking up close, things aren't quite as perfect as you might expect. There is actually a fair bit of smudging and imprecision in the black paint there, which is surprising. While we're at it, we might as well look at some of the Tampo printed details. So you've got the running number there, Western Region, Trailer it says. Quite a bit of printed detail, including some on the windows. Absolutely nothing wrong with that at all. The moulded detail in the bodywork is quite good as well. The roof looks particularly impressive with all of the riveting. And then you've got the vents on the roof, which have a good degree of detail to them. The underframe also looks great. There's plenty of detail down here. It looks very realistic. However, the chassis is just made of plastic. That is absolutely fine as far as I'm concerned. It's a coach, it doesn't need loads of die cast on it, but with a chassis, you can make it out of metal or you can make it out of plastic. I will point out that plastic is the cheaper of those two options, and yet <clears throat> 79.95. The weight though is not too bad. It comes in at 155 grams. So again, the, the lack of weight due to the chassis being plastic is not a massive problem. The bogey detail is absolutely fine. You can see plenty of fidelity there in the different moulded parts. And we've also got some nice metal wheels which do look quality, so no problem there. We've also got these nice handrails alongside the doors which are separately fitted. However, the door handles and such themselves, those are just a part of the moulding and they've been painted. And the same is true for the other doors on the model. No separately fitted grab rails or handrails, those are just painted parts. 
and in some cases the paint on those parts is not of the highest quality, which is quite unfortunate given this price. Looking at the back of the model, you can see we do have a number of separately fitted parts, including these little handrails. I believe those are made of metal. Again, some of these, though, don't look that neat. There is a little bit of visible glue, which does spoil the effect somewhat. And then further down on the buffer beams, we do have these very fine metal buffers, but these are not sprung. These are just standard buffers. Again, that's all you need with the coach. That is absolutely fine. Although I do wish the lack of flashy features like sprung buffers was again reflected in the price. The interior detail is okay. We do have separately painted seats and such inside. I would say the level of the floor looks a little bit high. I mean, that did catch my eye. I don't think it's terribly distracting, but I think it is noticeable, particularly in the cab, where the level of realism, again, is slightly disappointing. There are a few controls inside there, so there is an attempt to make this area look quite detailed. But if I show you some footage that I took of the interior of an auto coach, you can see they are absolutely wonderful inside. And at nearly £80 RRP, I think Backman have really missed an opportunity to make the interior of this coach absolutely wonderful. And for sure, if this had a completely realistic, super detailed interior, I would not be complaining about the price as much as I am. The front end also has a decent level of detail, at least externally. You've got what I always thought was a bell. Is that a bell? I forget now. That looks like it's separately fitted. But again, this wiper on the front window <laughs> looks like it's just been painted on. Not particularly convincing for such an expensive model. And then again, you've got a similar sort of buffer beam without the details fitted. Although do bear in mind, you have the option to fit those if you like. So hopefully you can see what I mean. Nothing majorly wrong with the quality of this coach. Nothing majorly wrong with the level of detail either. It does more or less what a coach is supposed to do. I just can't understand why this has to cost as much as it does, given that really the number of flashy features is kept to an absolute minimum. Frankly though, even the typical retailer price of £67.99 just seems quite greedy. And I have to say you don't get what you pay for at that price. However, we need to talk about performance. Um, I'm really looking forward to seeing if this has got lights. I haven't noticed any looking at it, but it's got the pickups, it's got the high price, so definitely expecting some sort of lighting package here. So let's get this down onto the track and let's get started. So here is my test setup. We've got the Auto Coach ready on the track and I've got my 64XX, which is one of my new Great Western tank engines, uh, ready to couple up to it. And also these locos in real life were compatible with the Auto Coaches. First of all though, let's talk about how free rolling this coach is. And the answer is very, very free rolling indeed. It got all the way down Gordon's Hill to the bottom curve, which is pretty much unheard of. And funnily enough, the last bit of rolling stock I reviewed did the same. So yeah, well done Backman, that is very good. The next big question I want to answer is whether or not this coach has lighting. So I'm going to pull off the loco and give it some power. And I'm pretty sure I know the answer to this because I've looked for LEDs inside and I couldn't see any. So power, 100%. Can you see anything? No, no, nothing in the cab, nothing in the back end, nothing at the front or the back. No, absolutely nothing. No lights at all. Wow. So for me, that is the nail in the coffin for this model. £80, no lights, basic level of detail, not the greatest quality in the world. Have some respect, Backman, for the customers that keep you in business, because this is absolutely ridiculous. Sure, charge 80 quid for a coach if you want to. People will pay it, we've established that, but make it an 80 pound coach. The fact that they've still fitted all of the pickups and everything so that you could have lights in here and then just not fitted the LEDs is appalling. Right, so, hmm, that's put a dampener on things, hasn't it? Let's see what the coupling's like. Let's back the loco up. Well, it's better be right, you know. Normally these things are right with Backman. Yeah, there we go, very nice. Okay, yeah, good coupling. Real shame about the lights. I, I really would love to see the interior lit up here. But no, obviously that wasn't to be. So presumably, if you want to fit lights, you've got to pay even more uh, for some sort of LED strip to put in the roof or whatever. 
come on, for 80 quid, it would not have hurt them to fit some LEDs. LEDs cost almost nothing. It really is just showing contempt for customers at this point, isn't it? In uh, not spending that little extra money and fitting the lights. And the same goes with a lot of the other missing details and features as well. Not very impressed, to be honest, but um, it's a nice looking coach. Yeah, let's be honest, it's not a horrible looking piece of rolling stock and it does seem fit for purpose. But let's be clear here, this is a, a 30 to 40 quid coach. At 80 pounds, it is just ludicrous. Anyway, let's get it going. 40% speed, not too fast. See what it looks like. On the plus side, I mean, clearly this is a big improvement over the other auto coach I showed at the start. Yeah, it's obviously much more detailed, much more finessed. But um, in terms of value for money, it's certainly not much better, is it? Because you have to pay far too dearly just to get those improvements. So honestly, I'm not sure which one I'd recommend. I certainly wouldn't recommend giving Backman all of that money for what is basically just a regular coach. <sighs> honestly. So in real life, an auto coach would spend around half of its time going in reverse. So I am gonna do the reverse points test because obviously the reverse performance is quite important. So let's see how this goes. Nice and easy, only a single coach, so this shouldn't be a problem. Yeah, so far so good, second point. Okay, stayed coupled, great. Forwards, let's go a bit faster. great so it might be a letdown in many areas but in terms of performance this seems solid as a rock which is excellent so there you go top-notch performance let's have some ratings then for backman's br auto trailer the level of detail for me sits at around three stars now there are some good things here the decoration is generally quite good the level of fidelity and finesse in the bodywork and the molded detail absolutely fine however for a really top of the range model, it is missing a few things, such as lights, a super detailed interior, because let's face it, this one is quite basic, separately fitted door handles, sprung buffers, it's just not quite at that top level of detail that you'd expect for an 80 quid coach. The performance though cannot be faltered, it does exactly what it's supposed to do. It couples fine, it rolls very freely, doesn't derail on points, what more could you ask for? The quality, to be honest, is not up to Backman's usual standards. It's all plastic, no die-cast chassis or anything like that, some visible glue and some issues in the paintwork with splodges of the black and such. Not quite as good as I was expecting. And then of course the value for money is where this really falls down. At the price I paid, £39.95, this is neither great nor terrible, I would have given it 3 star. But at the RRP, or even the typical retailer price of £79.95 or £67.99 respectively, it is just absolutely ludicrous. Particularly when you consider the Great Western Top Light City coaches that Dapple have announced with their die-cast chassis, with their immaculate interior detail, with the full lighting package. And what were they? Were they 60 quid each? Yeah, I mean, Backman, you've really messed up with this one. Uh, it's a very blatant rip-off, isn't it? That is 5.8 out of 10, a disappointing score and actually it's a decent bit of rolling stock. If the value was 5 star, if it had the right price, it would be almost 8 out of 10. But uh, no, they got greedy and that spoiled this model. Into the logbook we go then, that is 11th place above the Hornby LMR flatbeds and below the new Backman VMV Vanwide, which interestingly enough had a very similar issue. A fine model in its way, but with a massive price tag and not much to show for it. Well folks, I hope you've enjoyed this review. Yeah, I've been keeping the anger back, honestly. Um, it's been a while since I think I've seen such a terrible ripoff from Backman. And I guess the only silver lining is that clearly it hasn't gone that well selling them at such a ridiculous price because I was able to pick mine up for about half price, which, let's be honest, was the right price. Yeah, like I keep saying, that's what this coach is worth. Double that price is just taking advantage. There's no more positive way to look at it than that. But yeah, it's nice enough. It works absolutely fine, as you can see. No problem at all with the performance. And the level of detail is fine, don't get me wrong. It's not like it looks terrible because it's missing features or anything. It's just not at the level that perhaps I'd expected. But there you go. Thank you very much for watching. Do comment down below. Let me know what you think about this. 
and I will see you very, very soon for some more videos. All right, cheers, folks. You take care.